Thanks for joining us for today's message from Calvary Baptist Church in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Today, we wrap up our sermon series about us, discussing our core value, uncomfortable grace. If you'd like to follow along with the Life Notes, you can download them now from calvaryaz.com forward slash Life Notes. Now, let's hear from Pastor Pete Bunnell. Hey, you can have a seat. It is wonderful to be with you all today and also to be with you in Parker virtually. Um, glad to be with you there in the Parker campus. Um, hey, I want to invite you to take your Bible or your Bible app and open to the book of Colossians. We're gonna be in Colossians chapter three, verse 13. There's Bibles in the seats in front of you if you need one. Um, And as always, you're welcome to take those Bibles home. We want you to have that, we want you to read it, we want it to get into your heart, and we want it to change your life. So feel free to take one of those Bibles. And if you're using the Bible here in the room or there in Parker, you're gonna find this verse on page 1170, 1170. So today uh, comes to our last message in the About Us series. And I hope that you've caught, as we've gone through this sermon series, that this has been an invitation for you to join us in our mission. This has not primarily been a series of lectures so that you can know more about Calvary. That's not the main point. The main point is so that you get the invitation to join us in our mission, leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And we do that by living out our core values, right? We've been invited to uh, dive into God's truth and to serve others and to live transparently and to celebrate all the good things that God is doing in our lives. That's been an invitation. And as we live out those core values, we're going to help lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Today, I have the privilege of inviting you to get uncomfortable, okay? Isn't that a great invitation? Will you get uncomfortable with me? But, But here's the thing. We tack on the word grace because that's the main thing here, uncomfortable grace. And when you pair the word uncomfortable with grace, you get something that is really beautiful. So let's talk about it. What is uncomfortable grace? So we define that here at Calvary is that followers of Jesus give the same limitless grace that they have received. Followers of Jesus give the same limitless grace that they have received. And you see that in Colossians 3. Take a look at it with me. It says, bearing with one another And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must forgive. So uh, very wisely, Paul realizes that uh, in any church, there's going to be situations where you have complaints against the people around you. You know, people are gonna rub you the wrong way. People are going to sin against you. And his recommendation to us is that we would forgive in the same way that Christ has forgiven us. This is grace. This is grace that we get forgiveness. We get forgiveness from God. In fact, grace is a gift. That's just another way to look at it. Grace is a gift. It is the gift of forgiveness. It's not something that we can earn and it's not something we can work for. It is something that is given to us. And we see that in Romans uh, 6, 23. Because it says, for the wages of sin is death. So what we earn through our life and our living is death and separation from God. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So the thing that we get for free is eternal life. It's forgiveness through Christ Jesus. But I want to make one thing clear. It's only free to us who receive it. It was not free to God. In fact, for him to give us grace, it cost him his own son, and it cost Jesus his own life. His very blood and his body was shed to purchase grace for us. And this is an important reminder when we talk about forgiving as Christ has forgiven us. Forgiveness always costs the one who forgives. Grace is expensive to the person who gives it. 
because we're the ones who are forgiving that have to not dwell on that sin anymore. We're the ones that can't bring it up anymore. We're the ones that can't use it against others because if we're gonna forgive like Jesus forgives, then we have to pay the cost for that forgiveness and that grace. Jesus paid that ultimate price for us to receive grace. But how do we receive this grace? How do we get access to this gift? If it's a gift, we have to receive it in some way. And we see in Ephesians 2.8 that we receive this gift through faith, right? It says in Ephesians 2.8, for by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing, it is a gift of God. So in order to receive forgiveness, we have to receive it in faith. We have to believe that what Jesus did on the cross is enough for us. So a question, have you received the gift of grace? Okay, so there's like three of you that have received the gift of grace. There's more of you that need this sermon than I thought. We all need the gift of grace, don't we? Yeah. So, when we receive the gift of grace through faith, we become channels of grace. We receive grace and we give grace. We receive grace from God and we give grace to those around us. And we give it to others because everyone is messy and needs the grace of forgiveness. Everyone is messy and needs the grace of forgiveness. There's a great example of this in the book of Luke. If you want to flip a few pages back in your Bible to Luke 18, page 1042, if you're using these Bibles in the room, we see a parable that Jesus tells that points to the messiness of people. In verse 9, it says, he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. So just real quickly, let me interrupt real quick. These are people that had a real hard time extending uncomfortable grace, right? They treated others with contempt, okay? That's people that are not gracious. So verse 10, two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift his eyes to heaven. But he beat his breast, saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Pharisee is trusting in externals. He's trusting in external things. He's looking and he's comparing himself to other people. He says, well, I'm not like that guy and I'm not like that girl and I'm not like this person over here. I am doing okay. I mean, think about how um, foolish this guy is. He's looking and he's saying, look at what I eat or what I don't eat because he's talking about fasting and look at what I spend my money on, all externals. And he's saying, this makes me okay with you, God, right? I mean, it would be as silly as me. I'm wearing a Christian t-shirt today, okay? Catch up with Jesus, everyone. <laughs> hey, it would be like me thinking because I'm wearing this shirt, because I put on a shirt with a slogan that I'm okay with God or that because I'm wearing something externally that now my life is okay. It's ridiculous, isn't it? But that's what this Pharisee is trusting in. How about you? What are you trusting in? Are you trusting in the externals of your life? When you walked in the door today, were you feeling pretty good about yourself because you came in thinking, you know, I love my family, I'm a pretty good person, or I work hard, I'm a good person, or here's the one that I love. If you ask somebody, you know, is God okay with you? They'll say, well, I haven't killed anyone. It's like the lowest bar possible, right? I'm not a murderer, so God should be okay with me, right? Our externals are not what makes us right. 
Are you trusting in externals? Maybe you're trusting in the fact that you know who you're going to vote for, and when you vote, you know you're going to please God, and so you think, I'm okay. <laughs> Maybe you're trusting in your involvement. Maybe you think about this and you go, hey, you know what? I come to church twice a month. I go to CR, which is a good thing. I, I'm in a life group. I am pretty much doing the things that God wants me to do. Those are all externals. And when we focus on externals, we miss the grace of God. This Pharisee missed the grace of God. And because he missed grace, the grace of God, because he was focused on externals, he focuses on externals for everyone else as well. And he can't extend grace to them. Now, faith is marked by repentance. And you see that in the tax collector. Okay? The tax collector, to get an idea of what the Jesus listeners would be thinking, think about how you dislike the IRS and then multiply it by a thousand. Okay? <laughs> That's how they would feel about the tax collector. And he is the one who's the hero in this story because he humbles himself and he simply says, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. He is humble. He knows that he brings nothing to the table. He's like, I'm coming into this worship room. I'm coming into this temple, and I have nothing that is going to make God happy with me. All I can do is say, I need your mercy, God. I need your forgiveness. And guess what? He gets it. He's the one that gets it. He does not have to prove himself to God. He just comes to God and he says, I need forgiveness. And he goes home justified, right? That's what the Bible says. That means he goes home forgiving. He goes home in a right relationship with God. The other thing I love about this guy is he doesn't blame shift, okay? When, we, when we're dealing with sin, we've been blame shifting since Adam and Eve, right? Because they point to each other and said it's their fault, right? He doesn't blame shift. He doesn't blame his parents. He doesn't blame his wife. He doesn't blame his kids. He doesn't blame the Roman government. He doesn't blame his addictions. He just says, I have a problem. I need forgiveness. And he gets it. So when you came in this room today, were you afraid lightning was going to strike? Were you thinking that inside a church is the last place you'd ever dreamed you'd be? Let me assure you, if you came in here thinking there's no way God can forgive me, not when you think about my life, he can forgive you and he will forgive you. Jesus promises to forgive those who repent. All you have to do is say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus came to save the cheats, the liars, the murderers, the adulterers. He came to save everyone who would repent. He has limitless grace for you. He has limitless grace for me. All we have to do is to believe and to receive that, that gift. When we don't realize that we're messy, we're going to miss the grace of God. And when we miss the grace of God, we will not be forgiven and we will not be able to extend that grace to other people. But once we humbly approach God in repentance, he gives us another gift. He gives us the Holy Spirit. And when we have the Holy Spirit working in our life, grace changes us from the inside out. Grace changes us from the inside out. Let's take a look at another passage. I'm having you guys jump around a lot today. Let's look at John 16. It's page 1072 in the, in the Bibles in the room here. In John 16, Jesus talks about the promised coming of the Holy Spirit. And in verse 7, Jesus says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, that's the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes... He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. 
concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer, concerning judgment, because the ruler of the world is judged, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. So here we see that there's another gift that comes with the grace of forgiveness, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes to uh, finish the work in us, right? God forgives us through Jesus Christ. He, he forgives the mess in our lives. He heals the mess that other people have caused in our lives. And he gives the Holy Spirit to us to clean up the mess in our lives so that we're living differently. But some of us think that we need to be the Holy Spirit's little helpers, okay? And especially when it comes to dealing with other people. This teaches us really clearly that the Spirit is the one who convicts people. It is not your job to make the people in your life feel the conviction of sin. That's just not your job, okay? It's not even my job as the pastor. I mean, I'm just trying to talk to you about what I see in God's Word. It's the Spirit that will convict you. The Spirit is the one who shows us what righteousness is. The Spirit will show us that Jesus is righteous and then he will equip us and empower us to follow Jesus' example and to be like Jesus. The Spirit is the one who judges, okay? We're not the judges of the fellow people in this room or the people outside this room. It's not our job to judge. It says that the Spirit is the one who judges. So Satan is judged. Satan is condemned. Amen? That's good news, right? Spirit is saying, hey, Satan's judged. But there's a bunch of people in the world that are following Satan. They're judged too, but it's not our job to judge them. That's the spirit right here, saying that judgment is all about what the spirit is going to communicate. Next, the spirit guides people into truth. I don't stand up here pretending that I'm gonna say anything amazingly wise that is gonna help you Uh, embrace the truth or live the truth. It is the spirit that works in us to give us the truth and to help us to understand the truth. So have we seen that happen in scripture? Absolutely. If you think about the, the Pharisee and the tax collector, that was a parable, that was a story, but it happened in real life too. Paul, the Pharisee of Pharisees, the man who lived by rules and by external conformity, he came to Jesus And he came to the light and his life was changed. He became the greatest component of God's grace or advocate for God's grace. We studied it in the book of Galatians. Or think about Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector. And when he came to know Jesus, he made restitution. He paid back um, everything that he owed and more. See, when we experience God's grace, He changes our lives and we begin to live differently and then we can give that grace to others. So what does this mean at Calvary? What are some practical ways that it it affects us as a church? Well, first off, everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome in this room. We have open doors and we try to create a come-as-you-are culture, right? We are not expecting you to put on some special clothes or a cheesy t-shirt Um, in order to be okay and to be here in this room. This is a come-as-you-are culture. Everyone is welcome here. On a side note, though, while everyone is welcome here, not everyone is able to lead here. Let me just explain that real quickly. If you are a leader at Calvary, that is because you are all in. You've bought into the grace of God. You have humbled yourself you are extending grace to others, you're letting God's word direct your life, then you can lead at Calvary. But if you're not there yet, that's okay. We still want you in this room. We want you here. We want you hearing God's word. We want you to um, get to see what Christians are like. Hopefully it's a good thing, right? We want you to see what Christians are like and we want you to be open to what the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to do and lead you to believe. So everyone is welcome here. And we also realize that everyone is on a unique journey with Jesus. Everyone is on a unique journey with Jesus. We're not all going to have the same story to tell. My journey with Jesus is really, really churchy, 
Okay, I have been in church for as long as I can remember. My family tells me that the first sermon I preached was in the backseat of a car, and it was titled, When the Devil Came to Barstow. Okay? <laughs> and if you know Barstow, that might make sense. <laughs> but, but, you know, I mean, I've been in church and for a long, long time, and I trusted in Jesus when I was really young. I was seven years old when I trusted in Jesus, and I was baptized. But, you know, my life has been a mixture of that Pharisee and that tax collector. Because I can really easily fall into that thinking of, okay, what rules do I need to follow? What do I have to do so I'm being good? You know, but then I have to come to my senses and go like, I can't do that. You know, I just need mercy. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Maybe your journey with Jesus started in a bar or it started in a coffee shop or it started in jail, or maybe it started in a quiet bedroom where you cried out with tears coming down your eyes for the very first time, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Maybe you're in this room, and today your journey with Jesus is starting. If it is, praise God. We really want that to happen. And if you're making that decision to call out for the first time that Jesus would have mercy on you, would you please tell one of the pastors, or would you come and tell one of the prayer team at the end of the service because we want to celebrate that commitment with you. Another way that this impacts Calvary is that everyone receives patience as Jesus works in them. We realize that Jesus is working in each life and the Holy Spirit is working in each life in a unique way. So we're gonna give time and we're gonna give space for God to work. We're not gonna demand instant change because we know that when you're getting changed from the inside out, that might take time. So you'll be met with grace, and you'll be met with love, and you'll be met with forgiveness as you live that journey that Jesus is leading you on. So as I wrap up, have you been made a little bit uncomfortable today? Will you get uncomfortable and admit that you bring nothing to the table when it comes to your relationship with Jesus? And all you need to do is ask for his mercy and his forgiveness? Will you get uncomfortable and will you invite the Holy Spirit to change you from the inside out? It's heart work and none of us have arrived yet. We all need to be different. We all need to change and we all need the Holy Spirit molding us into something different. Will you live uncomfortable grace towards those around you and forgive those who have wronged you? I know for a fact that there are hurts in this room and there's forgiveness that needs to be offered. So embrace that forgiveness that Christ has given you and find ways that you can go and forgive those who need it. And are you ready to give that uncomfortable grace to others all around you? Go out of your comfort zone. Welcome people that are different than you. Stop judging, let the Spirit do that, and allow people to live their journey with Jesus. I hope that today you will receive God's limitless grace personally and then go about giving it to those around you. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Lord, I just wanna lead us all in saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I would love to say that I'm worthy, but I'm not. I would love to say that I have this to offer you, but I don't. So I just thank you so much for Jesus' gift. I thank you so much that he was willing to give his body on that cross, that he was willing to spill his blood, his precious blood for a sinner like me. So we are grateful. We come to you in faith, just believing what Jesus did. And God, we ask that you would help us to give it to those around us, that we would be channels of your grace, receiving it and giving it away so that people will know what it's like to have that life-changing relationship with Jesus. Lord, as we come to the communion table in just a few minutes, uh, we ask for you to direct our thoughts and our hearts and our minds so that we would love you more and know you more, follow you better. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As followers of Jesus, we can practice uncomfortable grace by giving the same limitless grace to others as we have received from Jesus. Thanks for listening to today's message. I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. To do so, visit youtube.com forward slash Calvary LHC and hit the subscribe button. You'll be notified when new content is posted and you'll receive our Your Word for the Day daily devotionals. You can also sign up on our homepage at calvaryaz.com. Well, that's all for today. Please join us again next week. Bye-bye. Are you looking for a way to dive deeper into scripture and make it a part of your daily routine? Check out Calvary's Word for the Day daily devotional videos. Visit calvaryaz.com forward slash D-E-V-O and sign up to receive these three to five minute devotionals right to your inbox each day. Our team of pastors and leaders share meaningful insights from the Bible to equip and encourage you in your faith journey. Don't miss out on this opportunity to grow in your relationship with God and connect with the community of believers. Sign up today and start receiving your daily dose of scripture.